welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Olivia. I like stories, particularly books, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. We are going over a few tips about how to get into reading or maybe get more into reading, find entertainment in reading, basically just reading, which is my favorite thing to do. So let's just jump right into that. Guys, my first tip for you is to start small. That means starting with middle grade, which is children's but not like young children's. Think like young chapter book, young adult, or even a screenplay. Reading is a lot like exercising in the sense that the more you do it, the easier for you it'll get. And if you haven't read frequently throughout your life, maybe for fun since middle school or high school or college, depending on your age, then that's probably where your reading level is. And there's no shame in starting easy because one, stories are for everyone and there's a reason why everyone likes children's movies or family movies. It's because they're accessible to everyone and they're really fun to watch slash read. So that rule applies to reading as well. And not for nothing, they're typically shorter than adult books. A lot of times I find adult books are at least 500 plus pages and if you're not used to reading it's going to seem incredibly daunting. So that is why I recommend books that are shorter. So for the short middle grade books I have something like uh, Percy Jackson or Harry Potter or this is a Greek mythology book from literally from when I was in middle school and I just read it a month ago because I needed an easy introduction to Greek mythology. But Harry Potter is good in terms of YA. We have Twilight. I've got quite a few back here on my TBR just because I thoroughly enjoy reading YA. Or, big, on, big ol' or, if maybe you want something that's a little bit more adult, I would recommend picking up something that's written like a screenplay. So here is Monster. This one is actually being turned into a Netflix, doc Netflix documentary, Netflix movie. And this one is written as in screenplay format. So it's really easily digestible. Another tip I have is to find a book that has a movie or a TV show adaptation. For me, it doesn't matter if you watch the movie first slash TV show first or you read the book first. If you have a hard time picturing things in your head when you read it, maybe watching the movie first will help you as you read the words process what you're reading. Or what I like to do is use it as an incentive. Personally, if I find a book, let's say it's Lord of the Rings, which is currently on my to be read list. If I get through that book, then hey, I get to watch a movie on like a Friday or Saturday night and that is a really good way of giving yourself a reward after doing something that might be hard for you and then you're like oh my god i did it now i get this which is you know really fun it's also a lot like what we did in school uh personally i remember in middle school we would read a book such as the outsiders and then watch the movie there are literally so many movies that are based on books like i said harry potter lord of the rings twilight why are there so many based on ya novels hunger games the Help, Pride and Prejudice, to name just a few, but I'm sure if you Google like top movies based on books, you'll find it. Mean Girls is honestly based on a book. I almost forgot about that. So now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna continue watching the Shadow and Bone trailer because I'm currently in the middle of that book series and the TV show trailer got me hyped for it. So I will reward myself by watching that show once I finish the book series. Another tip for you guys is read something you like. Listen, if you think that the classics like Pride and Prejudice are boring, dull, and outdated, then don't read them just because, you know, your pretentious uncle says that, oh, they're a must read. Listen, if you don't like it, then you should read something you like. For example, I personally love a romantic fantasy. Sarah J. Mass, Court of Thorns and Roses, which I never shut up about. It's kind of a book that's looked down on, but I genuinely enjoyed everything about it, so why would you not read it? Like, I could rant about why romance is a great genre but that is for another time but the point being if you don't like romance don't read a romance if you don't like classics don't read a classics if you like sci-fi you should probably read sci-fi or if you like true crime you should probably read true crime or following back to the first tip if you like middle grade and ya you should be reading those books and don't let anyone tell you what you're reading is dumb or stupid. I remember one time in middle school, my friends and I were really into reading manga and the teacher literally said, you can't read that, that's not a real book. As far as I'm concerned, if you're holding something in your hands or on an e-reader or listening to any kind of spoken story or written word story, you are reading. 
So you should read what you like. Simple as that. Something that really helped me get back into reading about two or three years ago was audiobooks. I realized that I wasn't making time to read and I also didn't have any physical books that I wanted to read and I was like, oh, I can just get Audible for a monthly subscription. Not sponsored, I genuinely use this service. And it made getting back into reading so much better and easier and I was consuming books way faster than if I were to just read them myself. And I understand that a lot of us have jobs where we can't listen to music through our headphones, but if you are driving or if you are doing something mundane, like I like to clean my room and listen to an audiobook because I don't always want to listen to music, super helpful. And another tip, I have a friend who has a learning disability and she has said that when she has the physical book to read and listens to the audiobook at the same time, it really helps her reading comprehension. Audiobooks are a great alternative and like I said before, if you are listening to written word story, then that counts as reading. Don't let anyone tell you the audiobooks, listening to an audiobook or reading an ebook or anything of the like isn't reading. Another really good tip that my friend suggested that has helped her with reading is to keep her book visible. She said to the point where it's almost in the way, and I do this without even realizing I do this, my book is always within arm's reach of me. It's the age old saying, if it's out of sight, out of mind, so if you keep it in a spot where you know you're going to see it and read it, then you'll be more likely to read your book. For example, this is my reading spot. I set it up on purpose and I keep most of my books in this little bookshelf so I always have my eyes on it when I want to look out the window like, hey, you should read your book. Ugh. One of my final tips will help your wallet and help your brain. Don't overbuy books. We all know that buying books and reading books are two very different hobbies. Yes, I know they're beautiful. They look great displayed. However, if you know for a fact that you can only read maybe one to two books a year, then you shouldn't buy more than one to two books in a sitting because if you buy all of these books in one sitting, this is over like five different shopping trips, just for the record. If you buy all seven books that you want to read in one sitting, you'll be overwhelmed by choice. You'll just be overwhelmed because you'll feel like you're being crushed by the teeth by your to be read list and you can't get through it and it won't make reading fun, which is the ultimate goal of this video, is to enjoy reading. My final tip for you guys is quite simply, if you don't like the book you have, don't read it. It's that simple. If you've tried to find one that is at your reading level, is in a genre you like, has a movie companion, and you just don't like the book, you don't have to read that book. I stop reading books constantly, and it's how I keep reading from becoming a chore because that's why people don't like to read when they come out of school. It's required of them. They don't like the stories that they're being told because a lot of times, like I said, classics can be outdated. They're great once you're super used to reading, but to start off with, no thank you. It doesn't mean anything to you. So you should find a book that resonates with you, read it, devour it, fall in love with it, and you'll be well on your way to being the reading rainbow <laughs> like I aim to be. So, <laughs> so sorry I did that. And that's it guys, those are my tips for how to get more into reading and make reading more enjoyable. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, do me a huge favor. Click the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button, leave a comment answering the comment question which is what are your tips for reading or tell me what you're currently reading or anything of the like. Maybe you'll just tell me about your day. I don't care. I would like to hear from you guys. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you think someone that you know Want to get into reading? Please send them this video. The more the merrier. And I will see you guys next week. Have a, ma have a magical day. Once a cast member, always a cast member. Have a magical day, guys. Bye. <laughs>